This week on The Splash. Games, rides, and more were on hand at Chico Elementary's annual school fair. Then the 11th annual Key to the Township Awards featured both new and familiar faces. And later, catch a brand new episode of our popular Parenting on the Go series. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I am your host, Jonathan Jackson, and as always, thank you for joining us. As the school year draws to a close, Chico Elementary held a fun and interactive experience for students and families alike before summer arrives. And this year's school fair not only provided fun, but also some financial support for next year's programs. This is Sheena Monin reporting for The Splash. Young and old alike gathered at Chico Elementary for their annual fundraiser fair to support the local school system. Close to a thousand patrons came out to historic Chico Elementary to help raise money for school programs in need of extra support. This is our annual school fair. Um, this is the one time that kids get to come out with their families. It's really just a big community event. It's just a great way to bring our families together before school lets out. This is like our biggest fundraiser of the year. Uh, we have it every year in May and uh, something that the kids and the community looks forward to. The fair supports a lot of our uh, programs that are not funded through the district. Uh, we have a Leader in Me program. Uh, we were lucky enough this year to get a partial grant from the West Bloomfield Educational Foundation and also a lot of uh, other activities, field trips for the children and uh, other things that you know the district can provide. And this year's event expanded from the usual West Bloomfield community of guests. Usually our fair brings in about 900, yeah, 900 people. This year we're hoping for a little more. We invited um, other schools from our district, so this year we're expecting more. An annual event has to stay fresh to entice visitors to return year after year. This year we actually have added new rides. We've added uh, new bounce houses. Uh, we've also added a bungee jump. The kids are excited about the bungee jump this year uh, connected to the rock wall. We've also added bumper cars. A good number of the volunteers were parents of Chico students doing their part to make their children's school an even better place. I've got two boys, one that goes to Chico and one that goes to the sister school, Doherty. He'll be coming here next year, so I have two boys here. And my other role is that I like to volunteer every single year for the PTO to help out. I think it's very important to give back to your community. I mean, first of all, they do a lot for us. They're teaching our children. The teachers are working hard all year long. The least we can do is, at least throughout the year and at the end of the year, give back a little bit any way we can. While a large part of the crowd was making a return visit to the fair, some children and parents were here for the first time and making the most of the activities. Well, this is our first year here at West Bloomfield um, School District, so we're excited that we can participate in all the events. We really like the whole school and everything, the kind of family-oriented uh, surroundings that, it, you know, it just kind of embodies family values. Today at the fair, the kids had a great time, and their tomorrow will benefit as well as all of the proceeds go right back to the school. This is Sheena Monin reporting for The Splash. Thanks, Sheena. Looks like you had a fun time out there. In fact, I'm a little jealous. But to see more from this year's school fair, you can visit our website at civiccentertv.com slash fair. Well, now this past week marks the 11th annual Key to the Township Awards, and per usual, the West Bloomfield community gathered together to recognize some of our area's most inspiring leaders. The 11th annual Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Key to the Township Awards were held at the Shenandoah Country Club. Fox 2 reporter Charlie Langton emceed the event and presented the Community Excellence Awards to the honorees, as well as Chamber Member of the Year. Each honoree was chosen for exceeding their professional role by either coaching, mentoring, or inspiring others in the workplace or throughout their community. And Civic Center TV also received special recognition from the Chamber for our work within the area as well. The evening as a whole was truly a special one as both businesses and neighbors alike came together to say thank you to those who continuously shine and help to improve our greater West Bloomfield community. And we would like to say congratulations again to all of those honorees. And if you'd like to watch the entire broadcast for yourself, then please visit civiccentertv.com slash 2017 GWB Chamber Awards. Well, coming up, we've got a brand new edition of Sidewalk Talk with Sheena Monin. And later, stay tuned for another episode in our Parenting on the Go series with West Bloomfield Youth Assistance. 
Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm your host, Jonathan Jackson. The trips out to Apple Island every year are run by the staff and volunteers of the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. And one such individual named Glenn King served as the boat catcher for several years, up until his retirement. But first, we met with Glenn and asked him what his experience has been like on the island all this time. For years now, Apple Island has been a tourist spot for the city of Orchard Lake. And every year in late May, a number of new tours are offered to the public for an entire weekend. However, to get there, you have to take one of their famous pontoon boats across the lake. And once you step off that boat, the first person you'll see is the catcher, Glenn King, who's been working there for the past decade. I've been uh, volunteering catching since 2006. Came out here in 2005 for the first time in many years on the tour. And I decided I wasn't going to leave. And I've been here ever since and keep going as long as I can. Yeah. But I do want to slow down a little bit. At the age of 76, Glenn's still giving it his all. However, these tours aren't just any old commitment for Glenn and the others. Because once the sun goes down, they have to camp out and stay there the whole weekend just to get ready for tomorrow's tourists. So uh, I saw some tents over there. You're spending the night? Yeah. Um, Mike or Mike Jewell or McQuandon is, is his Indian name. Uh, he cooks our dinner for us and I've got a tent here uh, Gina Gregory and her husband spend the night here and we just we're here to get up early in the morning and get stuff done and be here when the first boat arrives and make it good for everybody that shows up. Spending over 48 hours on an island requires some necessary preparation but luckily for Glenn he's been doing this long enough and with the right people it's more like a getaway vacation for him. So now, if you had to uh, survive out on this island for a week, could you do it? Oh, yeah. We, we bring a good amount of food. Uh, we're not starving for food at all. I think Mike would love to be out here for a week, or McQuandon. We've had uh, beef brisket last year. He's cooked a whole turkey. He makes all kinds of meals, and we enjoy them. But with retirement looming, many think this will probably be his last one. But at the moment, he says he'll miss a few things about the job once he's gone. The, the friendship with all the people, Mike. I'm also involved with him in blacksmithing, which is a little bit different in my life. And uh, Gina and her husband, and just a bunch of good people here. For The Splash, I'm Larry Nyland. Thanks, Larry. And thanks also to Glenn for serving all those years on the Apple Island tours. We're glad to have had you as a part of our community. Well, now let's turn to another of our episodes of Sidewalk Talk, starring Splash reporter Sheena Monin, who's out on the streets of Greater West Bloomfield asking some rather interesting questions. Hi, I'm Sheena Monin, host of Sidewalk Talk. We've got some great new questions for you. Come along and join us. If we open the trunk of your car, what might we find inside? Uh, child plays sand because uh, I drive a pickup truck so I need it to weigh down my truck. I'm from Texas so there's like warmers in there for all the cold so I had to get used to the cold up here. Real real different. I'm a desert rat. Blankets and a full change of clothes because I actually live about an hour and a half from where I work and you never know when you're gonna break down. Well I hate to sound so boring but my trunk is perfectly clean and I keep it that way um, unless I'm hiding contraband going over the border to Windsor. 
first aid kit. Winter's over, but I still have an ice scraper. There's a little bell that I start the uh, Rotary Club meeting with and close with. That's always in there. Um, so it's mostly rotary stuff. If we open the trunk of your car, what might we find inside? Um, tutoring books, because I teach English as a second language, so that's what's in my trunk. It's a spare tire at the moment, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. <laughs> um, probably a lot of shoes. Rather than putting the garbage bag outside by the curb, I leave it in the trunk. So that's my biggest fear. <laughs> I have a bunch of empty water jugs that I take to Kroger to fill up, you know, water. So it's like they're, when I close it, I can't fit anything else in there. So it's kind of embarrassing whenever I open it up at the grocery store and they all like, you know, bounce out. Well, I have a truck and in the back you would find almost everything you need. <laughs> I got a little bit of everything. It's like my purse. <laughs> no, it is. I, I need something, I can find it back there. <laughs> Thanks to West Bloomfield for some more great answers to our questions. Join us again next time for more episodes of Sidewalk Talk. This week's question came as a bit of a surprise for most people, but I'm glad everyone played along. And as for me, well, the only thing in my trunk right now is a bowling ball, so nothing too special, I guess. However, if you'd like to see some of our other silly questions on the show, you can visit our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalktalk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update, where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And you can even stay up to date on all the following current events yourself by simply visiting civiccentertv.com slash events. So without further ado, let's get started. Would you be interested in leading a tour on Apple Island or maybe even guiding folks through the Orchard Lake Museum? Well, you can. Just come on down to the museum on May 17th at 7 p.m. and get the scoop for yourself. However, you must RSVP for this event by Tuesday, May 16th. And to do so, please call the Historical Society's president, Gina Gregory, at 248-622-7570. Or come take a walk on the wild side through a guided tour of Apple Island on May 20th and 21st. Starting at the Orchard Lake Museum, you can ride a pontoon boat all the way to the island and then walk around its perimeter for about two and a half to three hours, interacting with volunteer guides. In order to participate, you must be ages five or older, and please wear comfortable clothing for the hike. Plus, if you'd like to know more about the event, you can visit the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society's website online. The Charity Cakes Pancake Breakfast is back at West Bloomfield High School on May 20th from 8.30 to 11 a.m. Breakfast includes all-you-can-eat pancakes, sausage, and orange juice, as well as coffee. And tickets are just $12 per person at the door, or you can buy them early for $10. And it's only $5 for kids 10 and under as well. Also, your contribution toward this event helps to support the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield, the Greater West Bloomfield Community Coalition, West Bloomfield Youth Assistance, and the West Bloomfield Optimist Club. So be sure to bring as many people as possible for this fun and delicious morning. Sign up and take an evening tour of the Materials Recovery Facility in Southfield on May 24th. You can meet up at the West Bloomfield Recreation Activity Center at 6 p.m. to catch a bus and then take a tour inside of the processing facility alongside its employees. Also, you must be wearing closed-toed shoes and pants due to the surroundings, and only those ages 8 or older are allowed to visit. If interested, tickets are just $8 for residents and $13 for non-residents. The citywide garage sales in both Kego Harbor and Sylvan Lake are back. On May 25th, you can merrily trek your way through these two cities for three days to hunt or three days to sell. Also, for all Sylvan Lake residents, you must fill out a permit at City Hall and pay a fee of $20 to sell your items. For additional information, please go to either city's website and find out more. West Bloomfield Parks invites you to their first ever native plant sale at Marsh Bank Park on May 21st from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. You can support local insects and birds by choosing plants, shrubs, and trees that thrive within their area. Also, a portion of the sales will be donated to West Bloomfield Park's Nature Room and will help to fund environmental education. The Schmier Chapel Chamber Series is delighted to kick off the 2017-2018 season with the internationally acclaimed Max Sisters, who were on the show here once. On May 21st at 7.30 p.m., they'll be inside Temple Israel. For more information or to RSVP, please contact their manager, Stephanie Bravenick, at 248-661-5700. 
Do you have kids or enjoy building wacky or unusual objects? If so, then on May 21st, starting at 1 p.m., the West Bloomfield Library is challenging kids of all ages to construct towers, animals, and other creations using some of their off-the-wall building materials. No registration is required for this event, and it goes until 4 p.m., so why not come on out and stretch the limits of their imagination? Learn the step-by-step -step basics of Medicare sign-up on May 25th at 6.30 p.m. inside West Bloomfield High School. While there, you can get help navigating the complex systems of staying healthy from Joanne Giardini Russell, a.k.a. the Medico Medicare Girl, from WDIV Channel 4. Also, you must be ages 18 or older to participate, and the cost is $15 per person. Why not bring out the whole family to touch some cars and trucks and all manners of vehicles at Drake Sports Park on June 2nd at 5 p.m.? Whether it be police, fire, or construction, there are several different vehicles to choose from at this event. Plus, there will also be inflatables for the little ones, so don't forget to bring socks. Lastly, registration isn't required, but parking will cost around $5 per car in order to help fund West Bloomfield Park's Camp Financial Aid Program. On June 3rd, starting at 8.15 a.m., you can join the Walk West Bloomfield group at Walnut Creek Middle School for a guide tour along a scenic and historic rail-to-trail network. Learn about the trail's history, bird watch, or just enjoy the scenery. Plus, the Orchard Lake Museum will be open and available for families to come visit and enjoy some refreshments. The walk is approximately seven miles long, and buses will be waiting at the end to transport participants back to the starting point. The American Cancer Society's Relay for Life celebrates survivors at St. Mary's School. On June 3rd at 10 a.m., the Survivor's Lap starts and afterwards will be followed by the Caregiver's Lap. The closing ceremony remembers those who have been lost and reaffirms the commitment to keep fighting. For more information, please contact Sarah Yerke at 248-663-3510. And that's all for now. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with a beloved member of the West Bloomfield Public Library. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. In the air. In the park in your town. Civic Center TV keeps you up to date on everything going on in West Bloomfield. Go for a hike. Meet the neighbors. Take a splash and explore all that our area has to offer. Civic Center TV. Television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jonathan Jackson, and my guest on the show this week is Jill Bickford, the head of youth services at the West Bloomfield Public Library. Jill, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. It's wonderful to have you. I mean, the library is growing over in West Bloomfield, and so many things are happening, especially now that summer is coming by. That's the right. Summer reading program is a big part of things. Can you tell us what are you most excited for for this upcoming summer? Um, this upcoming summer, um, we have so many um, special programs planned to keep families entertained, um, all free of charge, of course, because we know that you need to keep kids moving and out of the house. Um, so we've got all kinds of things, magic shows, puppet shows, all different things, all listed on our website. We're also very excited to bring back our summer challenge. That is um, a component of our summer reading program. Of course, the goal with summer reading is to keep kids reading over the summer so that they won't experience what we call the summer slide. Uh, the infamous summer slide. Yep, summer slide, right, mm -hmm. where studies show that kids will drop two levels of learning or as much as two months because they're out of school and um, they don't just keep up with where they ended. When they get back to school, teachers say that they have to spend the first three to six weeks of the school year trying to get the kids back up to where they were at the end of the school year. Um, so the goal of the summer reading program is to prevent that from happening um, by giving kids reading opportunities and learning opportunities. Um, last year we surveyed parents and they told us, 90% of parents told us that their kids either retained or actually improved their reading skills over the summer. So 
we feel that we're really um, helping to prevent that summer slide for the kids who participate. So in addition to the summer reading program, a couple years ago we implemented what we call the summer challenge, which goes beyond reading because we know that that summer slide occurs not only with reading but with math, writing, science, all aspects. Of course, yeah. And we want to do whatever we can to prevent the slide all across their academics. So the summer learning challenge, once they've read 12 hours, they're eligible to participate in this and they earn online badges for doing various activities, science projects, um, little math um, projects, writing poems or stories, going out in nature and, and learning about the animals that they see. Oh, they've got wonderful nature here in the community. With That's the right. Parks and Rec and all right. that. Yeah, yeah. And wonderful trails and yeah. we want them to go out and experience that and make it a learning opportunity. Wonderful. Um, and so that is happening again this summer. Lots of opportunity to earn prizes. Um, every kid who participates first 12 hours they read, they can earn a book, a free book at our book fair at the end of the summer. After another 12 hours of reading, they can earn a second book, right up until four books. So they there's definitely a lot to experience this summer yes. for kids and yes. families too at the library. Right. I mean, you were telling me earlier how what, how great it is that the new drop-off program at the library or... Uh, well, we, we don't have any sort of drop-off program. We have oh. lots of programs where um, kids can go in to an activity. Uh -huh. um, like we have a Lego building program. We have lots of different programs where the kids can go in and the parents are then free to enjoy the library okay. if their kids five and older are in the program. They can be in the building, but they can be down in the adult magazine area catching up on their reading, maybe hopping on a computer and getting some things done that they need to do while their kids are enjoying one of our educational programs. Okay, okay. Okay. Now there has been some construction at the library that just recently is starting to you know clear up and finish yes. up. Can you tell us what's uh, the new that's the new things that are happening? Yes. Um, we had some construction going on in the fall, and unfortunately our drive-up window had to be closed for a period of time, but it is back open, so drive-up services are once again available. We added six new study rooms. Um, we, we saw that our study rooms were constantly filled. We had um, a lot of people who need collaborative space to meet and work, so six new study rooms. Um, it's a great place for students who need to get together and work, um, a great place for parents maybe collaborating with other parents, whether they're planning school programs. It's also a great place for families to bring their kids when working on homework or over the summer if you're doing some additional math or working on things with your kids. It's a great quiet place to get out of the house and come meet together. Okay. Now you're, like I said, head of youth services. That's correct. And so it's often you're with the kids, obviously, but what do you enjoy most about your position at the library? Um, I think what I enjoy most is the opportunity to instill a love of reading and learning in children and to see that the kids enjoy reading. They're exciting to come, excited to come pick out their own books um, and to watch them progress. You know, maybe they're reading Magic Treehouse last summer and then they're coming back this summer and they've moved up to a more difficult series. Um, and that they're happy about it, that they want to read the books, and then seeing them right through high school, seeing that they're still coming back, even when they have their assigned reading, they're still coming and picking out some recreational choices as well. Now, can you give us any recommendations for our viewers or for younger viewers? What books are really popular right now that they should be looking out for this summer? Um, well, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series are always popular among those elementary um, students, and we've, we've got all of those. Yeah, those are very funny. <laughs> those are very fun. There's a lot of new series. We have, there's a lot of series um, about animals. Some kids just love to read about animals, um, and there's the um, Critter Club series, and then there's um, series about kids who go out and try to solve mysteries of missing pets. Um, lots, of, lots of good things for the young kids. We also have, um, our librarians can always make personalized recommendations because every child is a little bit different in their interests. Also on our website, we do have what we call Reader's Advisory Form Service, where you can go right in and you can fill out a form or you can fill it out for your child and indicate the age, the grade level, the gender, and what their interests are. And we will create a customized list to help you choose books for your child. That's great. And it's so nice because you librarians over there are so kind and helpful to everybody. And I know that really helps, you know, encourage people to come back and hopefully to attend a lot more events this summer. Right. So, That's our right. hope. Well, Jill, thank you so much. Thank I'm so you, glad to have you today. <laughs> Everyone, once again, Jill Bickford with the West Bloomfield Public Library. And remember, there are a whole bunch of fun summer programs coming this, you know, season. So please go on out and be a part of those. Thanks again, Jill. <laughs> thank you. Well, now let's head on over to another of our recurring segments on the Splash called Parenting on the Go, which is a program made in partnership with West Bloomfield's Youth Assistance. <laughs>
Hello and welcome to Parenting on the Go. I'm Jonathan Jackson and joining me this episode is Sergeant Todd McCaff with the West Bloomfield Police Department. Sergeant McCaff, it is an honor, sir. John, nice to meet you. Thank you. Glad well, to be here. Well, thank you so much. Well, we want to talk to you today a little bit about op opioids and heroin in our own neighborhood. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience in seeing narcotics here in our West Bloomfield community? Sure. Um, I've been in law enforcement for since 2000, West Bloomfield now. Um, Basically, you know, uh, last couple of years, I've noticed an increase in overdoses uh, we responded to. Um, wasn't until I actually worked for the Oakland County Narcotics Enforcement Team where I actually was able to see a very large epidemic of heroin increase in the area. Actually, a very scary increase uh, working for that unit. Coming back to the road uh, last year and a half, um, I saw an increase in overdose calls as first responders that, we re that we've gone to. Okay. And also in our community, I think another thing is keeping heroin out of the hands of our children. And I know that's a fear of parents, you know, keeping drugs out of the hands of any child is always important. But for those heavy narcotics, what ways can parents be proactive or find some telltale signs that their children might be using these drugs? Well, first thing parents need to know, the, the, uh, the scary statistic, which I learned when I was in narcotics, was that, you know, the United States is, like I said, 4 or 5% of the world's population, and we consume 80 to 85% of the opiates in the, in the entire world. Yeah. That's a very scary number. It is. Yeah. Um, so be mindful that when it comes to heroin, um, doses out there now are very fatal. Um, they can kill instantly. And when it comes to the home life, pay attention to your children more. Watch their behavior. And as a, as a parent, you definitely know your child's behavior more than anybody else. So you'll notice if, if their hygiene starts becoming um, less desirable. Mm -hmm. um, they start getting extremely thin. Their friends start changing. Grades start to decrease, stuff of that nature. Oh, yeah. Greasy hair. Um, just all are over poor hygiene and behavior. Irritability. Feeling sick all the time because they're having withdrawals. And, um, and also their valuables. That's, the, that's a very key thing when it comes to the home. Yeah. Those earrings you haven't worn in two months and you go to get them out of your, your, your jewelry cabinet and they disappeared. You don't know what happened to them. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon for children to steal items from the home, money and stuff like that to support their habit. Of course. And there are also some, you know, there are ways parents can notice like in their kid's room, like I say, if they notice something, uh, you know, usually we'll say, oh, a needle or a spoon, you know, those are obvious. But right. what are some of the signs, though, that parents might not be aware of? Right. Obviously, uh, you come across a, a needle or, or a spoon that's burnt, which yeah. I have here right now to show real quick. Yeah. Um, those are obviously telltale signs of heroin use, um, used for a layer to burn. But there's a lot of things that the parents might come across and they think to themselves, you know, what is this? And then just right. throw it away. Uh, very common uh, a uh, household item that's used to package uh, uh, heroin is a simple sandwich bag. And I have one here right now yeah. that shows you. Honestly, it's something you'd find almost anywhere. Yes, you know? yeah. and you come across this in your child's room and you find the corner ripped off on both corners. That's a telltale sign of, of a heroin. They purchased heroin and it, and it came in a package like this in the corner called corner ties. Corner, okay. um, you might find those in a bathroom and you might find them in a, a garbage can in their room and just think nothing of it. Also, um, lottery tickets are also a key packaging device. So really? if you come across a corner or a lottery, okay. packet, or, or lottery ticket cut or a keno ticket, that's yeah. usually an indication that uh, heroin was purchased or they got heroin somehow. All right. So those and are our, some items. No, I, I, I totally agree. Those are definitely things we should look out for. But there are also even prescription drugs in the home or those that you, know, you use for a while, but then you know, you know, maybe you're done with your painkillers or something. How can parents carefully get rid of those uh, items and dispose of them properly? It is statistically, you're 40 times more likely to be a heroin user if you abuse opiate prescription medication that's, that's prescribed to you. Yeah. So if you have them in your home and you don't want to use them anymore as a parent, we encourage you to, uh, we have an operation drop off, drug drop off at our station, Dropbox. Bring those medications down 24 seven and we'll be more than happy to dispose of those for you and not leave them in the home because that's another source for children to, um, mm -hmm. to obtain these pills and that leads down the road to a possible heroin addiction. Of course, of course. Well, thank you so much, Sergeant McCaff, for sharing these tips with us and some proper resources that we can use as parents in order to prevent these situations from getting or spreading. It's my pleasure. So, thanks thank again. You. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us on this episode of Parenting on the Go. And remember, if you'd like to look up more helpful parenting tips, then please go check out West Bloomfield Youth Assistance's website at wbyouthassistance.org. Take care, everyone. And I'd like to give another shout out to Sergeant Todd McCaff for sharing that information with us, preventing our students and young people from coming into contact with heavy drugs and narcotics like heroin is extremely important. We want to encourage all parents watching to stay alert for those warning signs at your own home.
And to see more episodes or hear other tips from our local experts, please check out our Parenting on the Go series on our website at civiccentertv.com slash parenting to go. And now it's time for our final segment on the splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize someone within the community who is either inspiring or providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Amy Strauss, the Community Relations Manager at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. For three years now, Amy Strauss has held the position of Community Relations Manager for Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, which means she can often be found engaging and interacting with the public at several events. In fact, a big part of Amy's job is creating partnerships with fellow corporations and businesses, which is why she's also involved with the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. Because of her hard work, Amy was even awarded Chamber Member of the Year in 2016 and is well known for promoting events such as the Health and Wellness Fair or the cooking demonstrations at Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. All in all, Amy is a true value to our community because she's able to connect people with the programs and resources available to them within West Bloomfield, and that's definitely worthy of making her our person of the week. And if you happen to know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. And that's going to do it for us this week. But as always, you can catch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 6.30 and throughout the week for replays. Or you can look up previous episodes online at civiccentertv.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook under Civic Center TV for more information. And for all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and of course, West Bloomfield, I'm Jonathan Jackson, and we want to thank you for watching. <laughs>